Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. My name is Marco and I'm here to help you master your money and build your wealth. I am finally updating my 34 week old dividend portfolio with M1 Finance. So if you guys remember, you can see the portfolio right here. It's finally actually grown to $10,218 over the course of 34 weeks. Um, actually a little bit longer because I started this on February 10th, 2020. But in this video, I actually came out with this video on March 2nd, 2020. 20 and it's sitting at about 380,000 views. That video is where I basically introduced this portfolio right here, which is with M1 Finance sitting in a SEP IRA. So the entire goal of that portfolio is to build a dividend portfolio that pays me $1,000 a month from scratch, starting literally from zero. And I couldn't have picked a better time to invest right before the pandemic hit. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I promise to update this portfolio at least once a month. Um, and I didn't do that for six months. And the reason for that is just because I've been super, super busy. However, if you would have gone to the community tab of my YouTube channel, uh, you can see that I've made polls every week. So what these polls do is that it basically uh, proposes two or three assets that I'm interested in investing in, and I allow you, the viewer, to vote on that. Um, so some of you may be saying, hey, Marco, I thought you were the expert. Why are you letting us vote on your stocks? Uh, it's just because I would have added any of these three to my portfolio anyway. So it's just creating engagement, okay? Um, so if you want to actually dictate what goes into this portfolio right here, um, simply follow my community tab. And you can see every week I get about uh, 1,900 to 2,900 votes per week. So it's pretty cool. I actually ask you for your investment thesis and see what you'd be interested in investing in. And I'd say 99 out of 100 comments are pretty useless. <laughs> no one's actually proposing a strong case for anything. Um, but basically, um, there are some comments in there that are actually really well thought out. Um, so with all that being said, let's actually go back to the portfolio. And I'm going to show you a breakdown here of the portfolio and how much it's making. Um, but since this is the first video after literally six months, um, I actually feel more comfortable just giving everyone a massive update, and then I'll get a little bit more granular every time I update um, with these videos. So as I mentioned, right now we're sitting at $10,281, or $18, excuse me, and the gain so far with the market gain and also all the dividends combined has been about $725 uh, with a money-weighted return of 13.82%. Um, so that's not uh, your standard ROI metri metric. This is actually money-weighted. So for you guys that are looking at money-weighted returns, it's actually a more accurate representation of your individual portfolio um, because it tracks actual gains, losses, and it takes into account all the buys, sells, and dividends. Um, so this is actually really helpful for a dividend investor to see what the overall portfolio is gaining or losing over time. Uh, so let's go into a quick breakdown of this pie. If you're not familiar with um, basically the pie structure of M1 Finance, I do have a free training down below. Um, it's absolutely free, no strings attached. I actually teach you how to set up a pie just like this. Um, so if you're interested in investing in M1 Finance, uh, click on that link and an email with a private link to a YouTube video will be sent to your email address. Um, so basically, you can see here that I have a certain weighted breakdown, um, and that's how you construct a pie in M1 Finance. My actual um, uh, percentage of the pie versus the target can be seen here. So the number on top is the actual um, percentage of my pie. The other number, the bold number, is my target. So you can see here that right now the highest valued asset in my portfolio um, based on value alone is $2,500, and that's VIG, that's Vanguard's Dividend Appreciation. It's basically an ETF made up of a bunch of different growth stocks that also pay dividends. You can see my next largest holding is VYM, which is Vanguard's High Dividend Yield. You can see VNQ, which is Vanguard's REIT Index Fund, which I significantly, significantly cut down on just because of COVID. I feel like commercial real estate is going to have a real hard time here for a couple of years at least. I used to work in commercial real estate and have extensive knowledge in that area. Um, the next is another ETF. Uh, it's basically Schwab's Dividend Equity ETF. And you can see iShares Core Dividend ETF. And then the rest are individual stocks. So this is the fun part. Most of this portfolio was actually constructed from all of, all of your votes here. And I either add new positions or I add to my existing positions and give them more weight. So it's really cool. It's really interactive. So just to finish this out, we can take a look at that I have 4% weight in Verizon, 4% in Johnson & Johnson, 
three in Walmart, three in 3M, three in Pepsi, two in Visa, two in Procter & Gamble, two in uh, Genuine Parts Company, and then the rest are 1%, which you can see here. So I'm actually going to go over to a website called Simply Safe Dividend. Um, I'm not sponsored by them. They don't pay me to use them. I actually pay them an annual fee to use this service. Um, but it's a pretty cool service to where you can actually add your entire portfolio and they'll actually give you their metrics and a breakdown as to how much income you're making, what their dividend safety metric is, meaning that, hey, is this dividend going to be cut in the future? Do you think it's going to be maintained or do you think it's actually going to be increased? Uh, and then you can see the dividend growth and diversification and all that good stuff. So um, first and foremost, since this portfolio is pretty much 99% equities, I did used to have a bond ETF in it, which I got rid of because bonds are yielding pretty much nothing at this point. I wanted to make sure that it was well diversified. However, um, keep in mind, you guys, if you have a portfolio that's made up of 100% of equities, aka stocks, you are not well diversified. You just simply have a portfolio full of stocks. Yes, you can uh, diversify into other sectors, which is what I'm doing, which I'm going to show you right here. Um, but keep in mind, true diversification comes from outside of just stocks. You can have, you know, real estate, precious metals, crypto, um, collectible cars. You can do, you know, fine wine, a bunch of different things to truly diversify your portfolio. So um, the cool thing is, is that um, I think that I'm pretty well diversified here. Um, you can see with Simply Safe Dividend, they're showing me all the different sectors that I'm in. And you can see that it's consumer staples, healthcare, industrials, communications, financials, IT, and consumer discretionary. The reason it's not picking up on real estate, even though I hold VNQ in this portfolio, uh, is because it doesn't pick up on stats that are in ETFs. So if you see here, if I go to uh, percent of account, you can see that VNQ is a significant portion of my portfolio at 18.1%, um, and that is all real estate. It's all REITs. However, it's not being picked up on the diversification. The reason for that is because this is an ETF, and Simply Safe Dividend doesn't uh, necessarily track that as part of your portfolio. What they do a really good job at is tracking individual equities, individual stocks, and this will actually help you visualize where you're at. So if I go to income, you can actually see where a majority of my income is coming from. Okay, you can see the diversification and where the money is coming from. So the top income source that I have right now actually is VNQ. And then you have VYM, VIG, SCHD, et cetera, et cetera. The reason why these are so heavily weighted is because they are actually the heaviest weightings in my portfolio. So if you remember this over here, you can see that a significant portion of my portfolio is actually simply just um, these four funds right here. And then the rest is individual stocks. I did that intentionally um, just because I don't want a huge portion of my income in one, uh, one specific equity or one specific stock. I'm uh, definitely old school when it comes to index fund and ETF investing. A lot of people say that that may actually be uh, di diversification instead of diversification, but that helps me sleep at night. Um, so with that being said, let's go to let's see what this portfolio is actually earning right now. And again, remember, you guys, uh, dividend portfolios or dividend investing in general take a long time to get going. But once you start reinvesting all those dividends, it starts to become a snowball and it starts to pile upon itself. So you can see here that my annual income with this entire portfolio is earning three hundred dollars a year. So that is not very much. But keep in mind, I've only been investing for about two thirds of a year and I I'm only investing about $1,000 a month. So that may be a lot of money to some people. Um, to other investors, you know, they laugh at $1,000 a month. But hey, I am making $25 a month, which I'm reinvesting back into the portfolio, plus my additional $230 per week, which will ultimately see this grow over time. So the nice thing is, is that my income is very safe. 74% um, is unrated. But the reason for that is because, again, it doesn't pick up on those ETFs, but these are all blue chip companies that are really, really good. Um, and then 20% is likely safe. And I'll show you that down here in this breakdown. You can see the dividend safety column right over here to the right. I'll break that down here in a second. But basically, I am looking at dividend growth of 5.4% per year, which is really high. I don't know how long that is going to be able to be sustained. 
And then the valuation, the overall dividend yield of the portfolio is 2.96%, which you can see in the top right right here. So for those of you that don't know what dividend yield is, I can show you the formula right here, and then I can actually show you um, what that means. So dividend yield is simply the dividends for the period divided by the initial price for the period. Uh, so it's basically the amount of dividends you receive divided by the equities price, if you will, or the stock price. So if you want to see a real life example, um, let's use $100,000 for just for easy numbers, um, assuming that we're not going to add anything else additionally, and assuming that we're using that 2.96% um, rate that my portfolio is averaging right now, um, with expected increases at 0% and zero years invested. So you can see here after zero years, this $100,000, this hypothetical $100,000 is actually yielding $2,960 in this portfolio per year. So if you divide uh, 2,960 divided by 12, that is going to be somewhere around $246 per month. So you can see here how powerful um, dividend reinvesting is and also getting a higher yield if possible. However, um, I advise everyone not to fall in love with a high dividend yield uh, just because sometimes that comes at the expense of the safety of the dividend. Um, what I'm looking for is for dividend champions, dividend aristocrats, and stocks that have consistently grown and paid out their dividend over many, many, many years. Um, I believe my criteria for this series was a dividend payout ratio of 60% with at least 10 years of dividend payout streaks. So we're at about 12 or 13 minutes now, I believe. So I wanted to just give you a quick update on the portfolio. Uh, next time, these videos are going to evolve into basically going over the portfolio very quickly. Um, going over some news within the individual equities within that portfolio, and then also going through any market news that I think is important or worth being talked about or discussed. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to sign up for M1 Finance, which I highly recommend, uh, check out the free training below, or you can sign up using the link below as well. Thank you so much and have a prosperous day. Hey, we're at 300 a year. That Porsche ain't going to pay for itself, son. We just got to keep investing. <laughs>